Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another episode of What I Just Played. I'm your host, Miles Lonely Michael. I do a What I Just Played video. Basically, what this series is, is I give my final thoughts on a game I've uh, recently, usually recently finished. Uh, sometimes it's it's a couple months, sometimes even a couple years in the making, but it's basically my way of a review, but I don't like to call it a review. I just basically at the end give a seal of approval, whether it's bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. And yes, I do get that from PlayStation Trophies, because I'm a huge trophy hunter. Did platinum this game, by the way, before we get into it. But welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. Uh, real ho quick housekeeping for you before we get into this episode. Uh, I'm on the web at on Instagram at dark underscore tower 19. That's all lowercase, dark underscore tower 19. So go ahead and uh, follow me on there for all sorts of shenanigans. Also, if before we get started on the video and my final thoughts on this game, uh, go ahead and hit that like button, give me a uh, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. I do all sorts of different shows on YouTube. I do this series. I also do my Raider Radio, which is my games cast I do weekly. So there's all sorts of fun stuff going on. Be sure to do all that stuff. So today, let's jump right into it, guys. I am giving my final thoughts on Dishonored the definitive edition on the PS4. Now, I, I got a bit of a confession to make. This wasn't my first time playing this game, nor was it, uh... It was actually my, my... This would be my second time, but there's a bit of a story behind this. I got this game when it first came out, uh, way back, I don't remember the year, on the PS3, so I played it in its entirety on the PS3, and at first, I don't know, you're probably thinking, if you're a veteran of watching this series, you know, I, I'm a Bethesda fanboy. Okay, I, I recently did my final thoughts on The Evil Within and The Evil Within 2. Both Bethesda games. De uh, Dishonored, I almost said Destiny because I'm playing through Destiny 2 right now. Uh, Dishonored, another Bethesda game. Um, I'm a bit of a Bethesda fanboy. I love most Bethesda games. I think they're just brilliant and very unique. So, with that, I back to my story though. I played the first game and I, uh, let's see, I need some dark vision here. It's been a minute since I've actually fired this game up. I played the first game on PS... Well, this is the first game, Derp. I played the game on PS3, and I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. And then I actually got this version on the PS4 and played through it again. I was, thought, what the hell, I'll give it another shot on PS4. Ended up liking it quite a lot more the second time around. And in order to platinum this game, guys, I did a total of four playthroughs. That's right, count them four. And it, it was definitely crazy, but it was, I had a blast, you know, even playing it right now, I'm still having a lot of fun. So, without further ado, what I do, guys, is I say what I like about the game and what I didn't like about the game. So, this isn't really fresh, again, i played this game before, it's just one I'd love to get my final thoughts on, and it's a game I think more people should be aware of, and sort of, uh, just have more fun with. I'm going to possess a rat, actually. Um, ba 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 Ba, 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 ba. So, what do I like about this game? Sorry, I should have edited that out, but I won't because I don't have pro proper editing equipment. I call this my, uh, it's a homebrew uh, final thoughts is what this is. So, there's a lot I like about this game, actually. Um, first thing I'm going to mention is just the gameplay. is so organic and so much fun. This game is heavily stealth-based, okay? And this is, oh shit, I don't have, uh, it's on my other fucking character, that's why I can't do it. I was going to possess that rat. But I guess that's not happening, so we're going back outside. Um, I, I love the stealth gameplay in this game. I feel like this game does stealth really, really well. So you have, to compare it to other stealth games, like maybe like Metal Gear Solid, where you have to sneak all the time, and if you get seen in Metal Gear Solid, any of the Metal Gear Solid games, everything is fucked. You know, everybody's alerted, you're just absolutely screwed, you don't know what to do, and you basically gotta load the game to a you know, point where you didn't get seen in order to pr progress, or if you d don't want to get seen, and you're, you die quickly, and again, Metal Gear Solid, I'm not bashing it, I love the Metal Gear Solid series, and it does stealth very well, but this game is stealth in a very different way. You have supernatural powers, okay, and you utilize these powers to basically get, move around and kind of approach however you want to, and... For stealth purposes, you have things like blink, you know, you can just go ahead and blink somewhere and then everything will be pretty much hunky-dory unless you get seen, but if you do get seen, you have the opportunity to take out the enemy, you know, and kill them and hide their body, so everything's not totally fucked, but it, it, it can get fucked if you are if you let them go and alert other enemies and you sort of have this uh, system where the enemies will 
you know if they're about to detect you, you can turn that off in the HUD. Um, if you do that, the game feels a lot harder, it feels a lot different. Uh, I'm going to have to go all the way back outside, and I really don't want to. But this game handles stealth in its own way, and I love it for that, because I'll be honest, I'm not a huge stealth game person. I, I'm i more of a RPG survival horror uh, open world guy, but so I, I don't dabble too much in the stealth genre, and I'm very picky, but this game, to me, is a perfect stealth game, and watch, this is a very video gamey thing, so you can actually, you can hold triangle and peek, and they won't see you, uh, which is kind of bullshit, but, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and take this guy out, uh, for, for no reason, just because it's fun, and pickpocket him, so for example, right here, I can pickpocket this guy, lift his body up, before his buddy sees, because his buddy sees, all hell's gonna break loose. I'm gonna bring him up here and drop him off. And, uh, basically his buddy's not gonna come in here because they, the guards follow routes. So, if you use, utilize your powers in the routes, this game is so much freaking fun. It's, and it's so unique, like I mentioned. Now let's go into the, you don't have to be stealth. This, this at its core is a stealth game, but you're not forced to be stealth. If I wanted to, you can go in guns blazing and weapons blazing, but here's the thing, that, that, that's kind of a double-edged sword, because this game can be very difficult, the, at least the combat is pretty damn difficult. So if I were to click on these two guys, and that guy, I'd probably die, because they'd alert him, they'd all come after me. I do have guns, I have darts, you know, you can put your enemies asleep, I can crossbow bolt them, I can indissary bolt them, I can do little proximity mines, this is my, uh, this is actually my chaos, my high chaos character, that's why I have, uh, no, this, I'm sorry, this is my low chaos character, this is why I don't have a lot of, uh, the abilities that help me kill, but you can basically play the game how you want. I'm gonna, uh, you know what, I might need the key from that guy, but I'm just gonna go ahead and find my own way. You can, that's another thing too, so it's, it's, you can choose to kill or not kill at all and be completely stealth and be a ghost, which, uh, one of the trophies in the game is to go finish the entire game without killing anybody, which I did, and that was very, I, I wouldn't say it was hard, but it was definitely challenging, without a doubt it was challenging. Let's see if I can get the, uh, one I need to get here, nope. But, it, and it's a good enough challenge, it's, it's very, pretty much play as you go, or you can do half and half. You can, you know, kill everybody, or you can kill some people, and go stealth through certain sections. It's just up to you, and not a lot of stealth-based games do that, to be quite honest. Oh, this is what I'm missing. Okay, so we're gonna take this, we're gonna grab this, oh, come on, grab the, there we go. And we are going to just go ahead and whoop up, and then we're gonna go in here. Put the thingy in the thing, and we're gonna ride this one. This is actually quite funny. I'm gonna try to get not detected while I'm playing, but I can't promise anything because I'm talking and playing at the same time. So I, I love the whole kill or no kill thing, and the whole system of basically there's many different routes you can take within missions in this game, and depending on the route you take, it's basically a passive route where you don't kill people or the, what I call the loud route, where you do have to kill people, and there's several different outcomes of what you can do that can actually shape and change the story, which is really cool. I love that about this game. I also love the atmosphere of this game, and the, the art style, okay? The art style is very unique. It's, um, people could call it a little, it's cell shaded a little bit, not a lot, so you may think it's a little cartoonish, but at the same time, it's very dark and gritty and mature and depressing, and this game is steampunk. This is one of the very few steampunk games in existence that works very well as a steampunk game. For example, everything in this world, in this universe, is powered by whale oil. And I know that sounds really weird, and it is, but that's just the way it is. Everything is powered by whale oil, and there's everybody's really stingy about the whale oil and how it's used, and a lot of the story arcs are kind of like, oh, hey, we need whale oil, so we're going to do this or that. And so it's very steampunk. You have Corvo's mask, you know, it's full of gears, and he has his, uh, these old-fashioned sort of, you know, 1800s setting where everything's very industrial. It's a very unique, uh, this beautiful artwork, you know? It is, and actually, the here's a fun fact, the art director for this game is the same art director of Half-Life 2, which makes so much sense because when you get to, I believe it's Chapter 9, the Flooded District, it looks like it's something straight out of, and I mean straight out of, the uh, the Half Life series, like Half Life Two, so it's it's great. Fun fact here: I can get into this house if I pickpocket that sucker. I'm not gonna do it, so I'll probably get seen trying to do it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep doing what I'm doing here. Haven't been detected yet. Haven't uh, none of that junk. Haven't killed. So I'm doing pretty good for myself, if I uh, do say so myself. But 
I'll probably fucking jinx myself saying that. Back to it, guys, though. Yeah, the art style, love the steampunk, love the uh, the whole... It's gritty, but it's very beautiful and wondrous to look at at the same time, if that makes sense. And I know you people who play this game know what I'm talking about. It's very unique in that aspect. So, I do also love, and this is going to surprise you, what I really like about this game. The dialogue, a lot of the story is told in this game through dialogue, and a lot of stuff you can do in this game, or it's a lot of entertainment comes from the dialogue. Like, I wanted to do, um, this isn't my favorite mission of the game, my favorite mission is, uh, the, the Masquerade Party, which is one of the best Masquerades you'll ever see in a video game. Uh, it's just so much fun, it's so crazy, uh, the characters are crazy, but this game has a lot of crazy characters, which comes with a lot of crazy dialogue. It's, it's really, I mean, it's, it's not necessarily bad dialogue, but it's so entertaining, for example, when there's a guard sitting, he'll be like, because there's a, the, in this game there's a plague, there's a rat plague that's taken out and infecting basically the entire city, well, you'll hear a guard cough and he'll just be like, uh -huh, uh -huh. And then, uh, there'll be two, uh, there's people talking right now, and they're talking about the plague. Uh, that's funny. That's ironic. But no, you, you'll, you'll hear, basically, two guards talking, and they'll, you'll hear this a lot. They'll be like, shall we gather for whiskey and cigars tonight? And the other guard will say, chances are very good. And then the other guy's like, do you think I'll get my own squad soon? And he's like, oh, chances are very good, yes. So it's, it's fun. It's really fun, quirky, weird dialogue, and it, it's, it's really cheesy at times, but it made me laugh, and I got good entertainment out of it, and I think it's supposed to be that way, so it is a little crazy. Another thing, last thing I want to mention, that what I really love about this game, um, b besides what I already mentioned, the stealth, one thing I did from it, uh, forget to mention with the stealth gameplay is sort of the takedown. So, for example, if I wanted to, I could take out that trap, zip over there, take out that guy, choke him out, what have you, all that junk, or I could just blast him with a sleep dart and he would go down. Um, so I do love the combat in this game, even though it can feel clunky at times, but let me go to what I was going to say, is I actually like the DLC for this game. Very few games do I enjoy the DLC, so shit, thought that was going to go off. Very few games do I actually enjoy the DLC for. But this game is great because you play as Dowd, who is a master assassin, uh, kind of like Corvo, the main character here. But he plays differently than Corvo, and, and it's sort of his uh, his take, his version of the story, sort of what's going on behind the scenes while Corvo does his stuff. Love the the Knife of Dunwall, and I forget what the other one was. But they're DLCs that are definitely worth playing. I wasn't that big of a fan of the Dunwall Trials DLC. I thought it was just okay. But the the, uh, the main two story DLCs were great. Uh, Bethesda usually does DLCs very very well, and I felt like they handled this DLC very well as well. <laughs> There's a lot of well going on there. Well, well, well. If it isn't a well, if you get that reference, we're now best friends. I'm not gonna say what it's from, but it's from a great game. So now that's all my likes, guys. Let's get into my dislikes, and I only honestly have a few for Dishonored. I actually dislike the story a little bit, and. <laughs> Bear with me here. Now, this story, I feel like, could have been told a hell of a lot better, and it just wasn't. Shit, how am I going to get past this? I'm going to try to... Sorry, I put my thinking cap on here. I'm going to try to zip over here, and then I'm going to quick zip over here. Beautiful. So, uh, this story, I felt like, had a lot of potential, but at the end of the day, it wasn't the best. It didn't really leave me wowed or like I I felt like I should have been engaged more is what I'm trying to say and not that the story sucks I mean it's not terrible but it's definitely not the best it's not like really great either whoa look at that that was crazy I'm gonna try to get this sucker I don't know if I can because there's that damn pile on there but it I, I feel like it could have been fleshed out a lot more it could have been explained a little better um, there's a lot they sort of left unanswered oh this part's a bitch I'm gonna have to go what I need to do is grab this and I need to go around the corner I'm giving you a little walk through this stage while I do it so if you're stuck on the stage this is how you do it oh it's already here all right so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take this out and we're gonna go upstairs so you can tell I've done this a couple times, right? But yeah, I, I never felt satisfied with this story, and it's a very simplistic story. You know, the Empress gets assassinated, Corvo is wrongfully imprisoned and blamed for it, and the story basically just goes off from there, and it's about Corvo trying to save Emily, who turns out to be, spoiler alert, if you haven't played the game, quick video now, Emily's his daughter. 
by the Empress, but they couldn't get married because she was his bodyguard, and there was like some political mumbo jumbo, so it wasn't really, um, I can rewire that and kill him, but I don't know if that's even active, so we're going to end my dark vision and see... Yeah, it's not even active. So, but basically, it, it's a revenge. It's a typical revenge story in the steampunk setting. And I won't give away anything else about the story. You do have some interesting characters, as I mentioned earlier. But it's nothing that you're going to be really wowed over. Um, and the ending is very lackluster. There's three different endings to this game. And only one of them, you're like kind of halfway satisfied. So I wasn't big on this game's story. It was just okay to me. Another thing I don't like is the game is short. Um, it'll clock in, if you take your time and try to do everything in the game, it'll clock in probably at about 12 hours. Um, if you rush your way through and kill everybody, you can probably do it in 8 to 10. So this game, I felt like we could have got, um, for example, the fuck, wrong button. Um, I, I, I was too nervous while I was doing that. I didn't want to get caught. Sucker. But I, I feel like they could have made the DLC part of the story, and that would have fleshed it out to be pretty good. But no, instead they had to uh, sort of make it really short, and whatever. I mean, it's not a big, big deal, but I was left wanting more gameplay, more story. I was like, alright, come on, what's uh, what's the deal here? Make sure I got enough, I got plenty of mana potions. I'm like, what's the deal? I'm, I'm left wanting more, so I didn't like how short the story was. And last thing I didn't like about this game, and this is the way the AI behaves, this is a huge problem. Um, and there's another bullshit thing, too, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say real quick. So, say if I'm gonna pick, let's say if there was an enemy right in this area, if I was to go and pickpocket him, which is the, or choke him out, I'm sorry, not kill him, but just choke him out through the non-lethal way, it's the R1 button. Usually, if you're not close enough, you'll do this instead of actually choking him out, and that can cause you to alert the guards. So that's an AI issue, and that's just a poor game design issue on uh, the developer's part, but the AI in this game is pretty stupid. Um, and then, and, and it can be unfair. It's very unbalanced. So let me just say that because there's times where you can be rightfully behind a person and not get seen, you know, if you're careful enough. Or there's times where you'll be right behind a person and for no fucking reason, they'll the little train sound will happen above their head and you'll be detected. Or you'll be way out of their, their little cones of vision. You'll be way out and they'll see you. Or you can be not making any noise and they'll act like they heard a fucking noise. Or you, there's just a lot of stupid stuff. Or you can literally be right fucking in front of them, you know, like crawling or crouching, I suppose, and they won't see you. You'll be like right there. So it's either they don't see you enough when they should have or they see you when they shouldn't have. And it doesn't happen a lot, but the AI is just dumber than a bag of rocks. I mean, they're pretty easy to fool and get around. I feel like this game would be even better. I mean, it's a great game, but it'd be even better if they did the AI how they... Oh, shit, he... He didn't discover me, but he's about to. I'm going to try not to get seen. But if they would have tweaked the AI a bit more, I, I feel like this game would be way more enjoyable. Sucker. I'm going to go right past him. So that's my only dislikes, to be quite honest with you guys. I loved everything else about this game. Um, so quick recap, Dishonored Definitive Edition with all the DLC and everything. What do I think about this game? My final thoughts. Here it is, guys. Well, I've loved the stealth gameplay, how it was unique and organic, and I loved how, even though it's stealth at its core, you could turn it into action, you could turn it into uh, full-on action, you could turn it into half-action, half-stealth, you can use all these different arrays of supernatural powers to help you along the way. There's possession, you can possess people, you can possess rats, you can do all sorts of silly stuff. Um, I can open up the powers for you real quick, and you can blink, which is my favorite ability, it's a phenomenal ability. You can do Devouring Swarm, you can win blast, which is a lot of fun. You can do a shadow kill, so this is really good if you're doing a kill playthrough where you can uh, unaware enemies will just turn to ash as they die. Um, you can boost your agility, all sorts of stuff. So you have all these, you can basically map your character how you want to play. So And it, it's just very great like that. I love the art design, the steampunk feel, the atmospheric grittiness, the beauty in the eye of the beholder. Love the cheesy dialogue and the great DLC wasn't so big on the story, although it has me engaged enough to where I can't wait to play the second game, and yes, I'm even going to play The Death of the Outsider. Can't wait for that game either. Well, it's, it's been out for years, but I'm so far behind on uh, games, guys. But uh, hey, I'm catching up slowly but surely. 
So I like the, uh, I'm sorry, I, yeah, just like the story, just like the AI, didn't like how it was short, but overall, guys, Dishonored is a blast. I recommend it to anybody who likes stealth games, anybody who likes a game that's just unique and different, because at the end of the day, this game is just very unique and different. There was nothing else quite like it before its release. Uh, so if you're looking for a game that's a bit crazy, and that's just going to kind of keep you on the edge of your seat most of the time with uh, the, sh the shit you got to do, and just the fun stuff, the fun shenanigans you can get into, and lots of replayability here um if you're a trophy hunter i always just throw this in because i know a lot of trophy hunters and if you're not that's okay ignore what i'm about to say but it's definitely um it's a pretty hard trophy list it took me a while to platinum it took me probably 30 hours to platinum so huh, now i get to go abduct this guy this is gonna be fun but it's, you'll, you probably won't see it because i'll end the video before then but overall, guys, it's this game's a blast. I recommend it to anybody who loves Bethesda games, anybody who loves a great single-player experience. Um, again, the stealth, the, the organic aspect of it, all that good stuff. So, with that, guys, I give this the Miles Lonely Michael Gold Seal of Approval. That's right. This is a gold, guys. Definitely pick this up. It's really cheap now. You can get this definitive edition for like 15 to 20 bucks on the PS4. It looks really good on the PS4. I didn't mention the graphics, but damn, the, they're a little dated, but the graphics do look very nice. I mean, just look at this landscape. It's very fleshed out. It's very, there's no pop-ins. There's no, there's a little bit of loading time, but overall, as a package, Dishonored is great. Can't wait to play and tell you guys about the uh, <laughs> rest of the series when I play it. I've never actually taken this route. Uh, this is kind of funny. So, yeah, guys, Dishonored, loved it. Definitely check it out in the future. Oh, that was one of those fucking, I hate those things. They, like, spit acid at you and just, ugh, hate those things. So, one more time, I'm going to remind you guys, I'm on the web at Dark Tower underscore 19. Follow me there for all sorts of YouTube news, videos, pictures of my boy that was just born. I love him so much. His name is Leon. Um, I'll be talking about him probably for a while in my videos because he is my life right now. Love that little boy to death. Um, my first kid, so man, being a parent and now being a, a parent gamer is definitely a bit different. Takes a bit getting used to, but that's not what this game's cast is about. It's about me and my, with my final thoughts on games, so definitely give me a follow. Um, on Instagram, like this video, share, rate, and subscribe. You don't want to miss the stuff I have coming up, guys, as it's going to be awesome. So, as always, guys, I am Miles Only Michael. I want you to keep rocking each and every single day of your life, because that's what we're here to do is rock. And I, along with this on our Definitive Edition, am signing off.